we are going to start with a very interesting story about copywriting your Magic the Gathering deck. Several of you sent this to me. There are various headlines. Magic the Gathering, so somebody copyrighted a Magic deck. What happens now? For the first time ever, a Magic the Gathering deck has been copyrighted. A provocative new copyright for Magic the Gathering cards raises unusual questions. A provocateur's registration with the US Copyright Office is turning heads. And then even Cory Doctorow weighed in on this, on his site, Pluralistic. This is what the big deal is about. This person, Robert Hovden, copyrighted something called Angels and Demons in 2021. It is a compilation and the material is a compilation of cards. I'll see if I can zoom in here further for you. The compilation of cards here is the new material and then there's material excluded which is the underlying individual playing cards and this presents a whole host of weird copyright issues the various authors point out correctly that there are some strange issues at play so for anyone who's not familiar as i'm not really a magic the gathering player but you purchase individual packs packs of cards from the creator who i think is wizards of the coast uh, or that rather they're the publisher and then you pick and choose your cards to create a deck within a system of rules and then you play the game by playing the cards for i'm assuming some of the cards are character cards some of the cards are power cards or or uh, equipment cards action cards things like that i don't actually know how magic the gathering is played because i've never played it but the point is it's a deck building well part of the game is deck building and then part of the game is playing the decks that you've built against other players so this person robert hovden has copyrighted the 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 clickbaity title that I keep seeing is that he has successfully copyrighted a Magic the Gathering deck and I thought maybe we should go over my thoughts on that because I, I think I can add some clarity here and answer some questions. What is the fear? What is the issue with copywriting a Magic the Gathering compilation or deck? Well, if you were able to successfully obtain exclusive copyright ownership of an arrangement of cards, a compilation of cards, a deck, and then enforce that copyright against other players, the idea would be that you could prevent other players from using the same or substantially similar deck. Because remember, one of the standards for copyright infringement besides actual copying there's also strikingly similar but the lower standard is substantially similar so if your arrangement and someone else's arrangement are substantially similar and you can prove that they had access to your compilation then maybe that's copyright infringement except I, I don't I don't see that actually in my heart of hearts my my lawyer's spidey sense says that that shouldn't be true that copyrights purpose is to promote the progress of the sciences and the useful arts to promote creativity could you really give somebody copyright protection legal protection a legal monopoly for 70 years plus the life of the author over an arrangement of magic the gathering cards and i say yes and no i think that there is very thin copyright protection for an arrangement of things so if you take a collection of 5,000 drawings that you made over the course of a couple years and you package them together into an arrangement in a collage of some kind and you sell an nft to that well yeah that image is easily copyright protected you've taken an arrangement of other copyrighted works in that case the works that he owned and then made a new image out of that and that can be copyrighted but that's going to trigger something in copyright law 
When we think of copyright law, what we actually think of is Section 106. 17 U.S.C. 106, the owner of a copyright under this title has the exclusive rights to do and to authorize any of the following. So the key word in here is exclusive right. They're the only ones who can do this. They have a monopoly. They have the right to control and authorize the reproduction of the copyrighted work to prepare derivative works based on the copyrighted work, to distribute copies, to perform the work publicly, to display the copyrighted work publicly, or perform a sound recording publicly. The key one here is to prepare derivative works. This Robert Hovden person does not own Magic the Gathering, so he can't produce a derivative work without authorization. Let's take a look at what a derivative work is, though, to make sure that I'm correct. In the definition section of the law, this is where the law specifies what these words mean. So a derivative work is a work based upon one or more pre-existing works, such as a translation, arrangement, dramatization, fictionalization, motion picture version, sound recording, art reproduction, abridgment, condensation, or any other form in which a work may be recast, transformed, or adapted. So you can have a transformative work that is not a fair use, it's still a derivative work. And that's normal, that's how fair use law works. Fair use is generally, at least partially includes a derivative work, and then the question is whether or not that derivative work is a fair use and therefore does not need authorization. Fair uses do not need authorization, but is a Magic the Gathering deck for the purposes of playing the game, does that transform anything? No, that's exactly what the cards are published for, so that doesn't sound like it. And then if we turn to some copyright office publications, you have copyright and derivative works in compilations. A derivative work is a work based on or derived from one or more already existing works. To be copyrightable, a derivative work must incorporate some or all of a pre-existing work. The derivative work is often referred to as an adaptation right. And so Mr. Hovden would have to have the right or authorization to make such an adaptation. Compilations of data or compilations of pre-existing works may be copyrightable if the materials are selected, coordinated, or arranged in such a way that the resulting work as a whole constitutes a new work. When the collecting of the pre-existing material that makes up the compilation is a purely mechanical task with no element of original selection, coordination, or arrangement, such as the white pages, copyright protection is not available. Some examples of compilations that may be copyrightable are a directory of the best services in a region, the list of best short stories of 2011, a collection of sound recordings of the top hits of 2004, a book of greatest news photos, a website containing text, photos, and graphics, an academic journal containing articles on a particular topic, a newspaper comprised of articles by different journalists. All of these have the authorization of the original creator or else they would be copyright infringement. They would be unauthorized derivatives. Circular 33 tells us that some works are not protected by copyright. To be copyrightable, a work must qualify as an original work of authorship. And so ideas, methods, and systems are not copyrightable. Well, think of the functionality of those cards. Is there something that Mr. Hovden has added to it that could be copyright protected? Or is he rather arranging the cards in order to use them for their functions in the game, their methods and systems and functions in the game? That might not be copyrightable because it's not copyrightable subject matter. And then I came across a, a really telling section, really, it struck me in the heart of copyright, and that's recipes. 
A recipe is a statement of the ingredients and procedure required for making a dish of food. Well, what if we think of Magic the Gathering as sort of like a recipe? You put together your recipe to make the best dish possible. That sounds an awful lot like an uncopyrightable statement of the ingredients and procedure required for making a dish of food. A mere listing of ingredients or contents or a simple set of directions is uncopyrightable. As a result, the office, the copyright office, cannot register recipes consisting of a set of ingredients and a process for preparing a dish. In contrast, a recipe that creatively explains or depicts how or why to perform a particular activity may be copyrightable. A registration for a recipe may cover the written description or explanation of a process that appears in the work, as well as any photographs or illustrations. However, the registration will not cover the list of ingredients that appear in each recipe, the underlying process for making the dish, or the resulting dish itself. That sounds an awful lot like what Mr. Hovden has done with collecting the cards for a Magic the Gathering deck. But wait, there's more. If we then turn to 17 U.S.C. 103, Subject Matter of Copyright, Compilations and Derivative Works, the subject matter of copyright, as specified by Section 102, includes compilations and derivative works. Great. But protection for a work employing pre-existing material in which copyright subsists does not extend to any part of the work in which such material has been used unlawfully. And I think that nails the coffin shut on the Magic the Gathering deck. The copyright registration is just a registration and it's not going to be able to be enforced because copyright does not extend to any part of the work in which such material has been used unlawfully. Section B says the copyright in a compilation or derivative work extends only to the material contributed by the author of such work. So that's another important section here. When you make a compilation, you don't automatically own the underlying works that, that you've been authorized to use. Um, you own only what you have creatively added. So if I go and get permission to put a thousand photographs into a book of my best photographs and I title it Leonard's Favorite Photographs and I publish it, I do have a copyright to that book and you can't go copy my book and sell it. But I don't own the underlying photographs absent some actual assignment of the ownership of those photographs. So this compilation is distinguished from the pre-existing material employed in the work and does not imply an exclusive right in the pre-existing material. The copyright in such work is independent of and does not affect or enlarge the scope, duration, ownership, or subsistence of any copyright protection in the existing material. So what is this? What is this that we're looking at here? How did Robert Hovden get a copyright well, this is kind of the clickbait part of the whole thing. All of these articles have been saying, someone copyrighted this, someone copyrighted this. Yeah, you all copyright everything that you make. It's automatic. Copyright protection is automatic. The moment you fix a work in a tangible medium of expression, it is copyrighted. And all you have to do to enforce the copyright in a lawsuit is to register the copyright with the copyrighted office. With the copyrighted office? With the copyright office. And if you want statutory damage protection, you want to register that copyright before the infringement happens. There's a little bit of a window when you first publish, but it's a very complicated law that lawyers often get wrong. So we're going to skip that for now. Register your work before you publish, and then you will have the maximum statutory protection as well. Consult with a lawyer to make sure you're doing it correctly. If you have any questions, research things on the copyright.gov website. So back to this. What is this? This is the registration. Robert Hovden has claimed copyright in his arrangement of cards, but otherwise that copyright has gone unchallenged. This registration just says that he went on to the copyright.gov website, paid something like 45 or $65, submitted a deposit copy of 
his arrangement of cards, which we can't see without requesting it from the office and waiting months for it to come. And that costs money too. And then he has a piece of paper saying he owns a copyright. And that piece of paper comes with a presumption, a, a rebuttable presumption that you have a copyright. But that presumption, that rebuttable presumption is rebuttable. If he goes to enforce this copyright against anybody, they can then either defend themselves in the lawsuit or they can sue him in a declaratory judgment action to invalidate his copyright or have a judge rule that his copyright wasn't valid in the first place. So this is a big story about nothing and, and that's kind of why these articles call Mr. Hovden a provocateur because that's really what he's doing is he's calling attention. I've made a video about it. I think his job has been done as in he's called attention. He's got four or five articles written here about it. I've done a video now and we're all much more aware of the flaws and loopholes in copyright. One of which is that there's almost no checking for the validity of a copyright when you submit it to the copyright office. It gets checked for validity when you enforce it and someone challenges it in their defense. There was the case of, I think, the Millie Rock Dance, which I think I covered. I'll put a bubble if I find that video from two or three years ago, where I think it was the artist Millie tried to copyright a dance and the copyright office did deny his registration. Then there was also the Elderwood hex chest box situation, which is still ongoing. And their copyright was denied twice by the copyright office saying that that hexagon shape was not something that could be copyrighted. So there is a limit and the examiner at the copyright office does do a basic check for copyrightability, but the examiner in this case felt that the registration could go through as a compilation, leaving the victims of any later enforcement action to challenge that. I am hesitant to say that this will ever be enforced, that some Magic the Gathering compilation copyright owner will eventually enforce. Could you imagine this scenario? You go to a Magic the Gathering tournament, you put your deck down, and the other person puts their deck down. I'm guessing you don't show each other your entire deck, but as the game goes on, you say, hey, that that deck looks similar to my deck. In fact, it's so similar, I think it's substantially similar. Uh, I'm claiming copyright on your deck. What effect would that have? I would not have any effect whatsoever on the tournament. Maybe someone running the tournament could be afraid of copyright ramifications and shut something down, have a what I would call an overreaction for lack of an of a known outcome to this situation, because this situation doesn't happen. You don't have people copywriting their card decks in games and then trying to enforce against other people playing the game. Could someone copyright the compilation and then publish like a guide about how you build decks in Magic the Gathering and could that be a fair use? Could that be copyrighted? Absolutely. 100% Mr. Hovden could make a guide about how to build a deck and include his compilation and that's probably some kind of copyright protected might even be a fair use and might not need authorization from the original creator the Pe wizards of the coast or, or whoever owns magic the gathering but in gameplay when you're using the deck for its functionality i don't think copyright applies at all let alone that we've also got the prohibition on enforcing copyright on derivative works that were unauthorized. So I think that's a really interesting situation. You really got my brain going on that one. Let me know if I've missed anything or if you have any comments in the comments below. Can you arrange the list of cards such that they read like a poem and copyright that?
In the same sense as the previous examples, you can arrange them in any way, and your creativity in arranging them grants you a thin copyright on only what you added. So if you arrange them to create a poem and you publish a YouTube video about how you uh, made this poem and then you read the poem or something, yeah, your YouTube video is copyrighted and, and you can register that. But if you go to a Magic the Gathering tournament and say, you're not allowed to play this arrangement of cards because I have this arrangement of cards copyrighted, I don't think you have a leg to stand on. I don't think that that's going to go anywhere unless, say, the person running the tournament or entity running the tournament is so afraid of you and your copyright prowess that they decide to terminate the match or the tournament because you own a copyright on a deck purportedly, allegedly, allegedly. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's today's video. Special thanks to our top supporters in August, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hightoff, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Brandon Abel, Shadow Tycho, RDH Dragon, Earthbound Star, Pure Magma, Drew Hart, and Eric Tams. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJFrench, Sponsus.com slash Law, through YouTube memberships and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for our weekly production stream on Twitch.tv slash Lawful Masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye. of a copyright under this title has the exclusive damn it damn it how do i delete this delete it